Coming up next from Las Vegas, our main event. It'll be relentless Lehman Brewster, and he's ready to make his first defense of the WBO heavyweight title against relatively unknown Kali Meehan. Well, when there's no dominant champion, entrance into the heavyweight elite comes via revolving door. In April, Vladimir Klitschko exited, and Lehman Brewster made a most emphatic entrance. Previously dismissed as an underachiever, Brewster's knockout of Klitschko was a shocker. In that fight, he showed a big punch and a strong chin. At heavyweight, those two attributes can take you a long way, whether you're fighting a giant like Vladimir Klitschko or a, a former sparring partner like Kali Meehan. For four rounds, the fight proceeded as predicted. The powerful Vladimir Klitschko dominating, frustrating, and punishing his little-known opponent. But in the final moments of the fifth round, Lehman Brewster changed all that, stopping the 11-1 favorite and winning the WBO title. That was the first fight I ever had where I just felt so relaxed and comfortable that it was like, wow, it's an out-of-body experience. I was never affected by any of his punches, even though he threw a million of them. When the time was right, my switch just came on and said, okay, now we turn on the nitro. And he couldn't, you know, he couldn't endure. Now the story takes another strange twist. The newly crowned champion is making his first title defense against Kali Meehan, a man who helped prepare him for that huge upset win. He was my top sparring partner. You know, he gave me headaches, and I hope I gave him some. Because Kali Meehan can fight, Jack. Meehan, a former professional rugby player, has compiled a 29-1 record. And the towering Australian was invited to Brewster's camp to approximate the size and imitate the fighting style of Vladimir Klitschko. Together, Brewster and he sparred countless rounds and forged a friendship. Obviously, I was over the moon. I mean, to fight for a heavyweight world title has been my dream since I've been a little boy. And also, there was a little bit of feeling like I wish it was someone else. First, I was like, man, I don't want to fight this guy. I know this guy. But then I had to get my personal feelings passed and say, hey, man, this is business. Unless it was like my mother or somebody, I'd knock my brother out. <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying, you know. To win in boxing, you must hurt your opponent as frequently and as viciously as possible. Tonight, Brewster and Meehan put their relationship aside to vie for the heavyweight title. It's just him saying, hey, you know what? I think my skills are better than yours. And I say, no, I think my skills are better. That's feeling, tastes great. Deep down, I know I have the better skills, you know? To, 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 <laughs> to match my skills against him, it's, 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 it's an honor. <laughs> and it's, it's we might knock punches, each other out. Who that? knows, man? Yeah, we yeah. both be out, you know? But uh, it's going to be a good fight, though. Well, I hope my jaw ain't sore, because if it is, he's going to buy me dinner. They look like they're ready for their own talk show, the comedy circuit. Even though he's been around for a while, Lehman Brewster qualifies as a fresh face in a division that remains in desperate need of one. Now, with his KO of Klitschko, he created a ton of momentum. The question from tonight forward, is he good enough to capitalize on it? Back here with my partner, Al Bernstein. And now with uh, tonight's matchup, two guys who obviously know each other very well. They sparred 76 rounds together. It would seem a major advantage for the champion. Well, you know, sparring sessions feature bigger gloves, headgear, and certainly a more controlled environment. And at least one of the fighters is functioning normally like a scout team in football. And in this case, it was Mian who was impersonating Vladimir Klitschko when he sparred with Brewster. Now, real matches are different. So while there is some familiarity, there could also be some false impressions for either boxer from those sessions. And tonight's strategies have to be forged with that in mind. Brewster's jab is a good, though, underused punch. He should use it tonight. Now, if Meehan lays all over him, it will create some fatigue and limit Brewster's punching ability. The left hook is Brewster's calling card, and it won him his championship. If Meehan, like Klitschko here, lowers his head, then Brewster can score with combinations like the hook and the right hand. And Brewster's payoff punch, the left hook, is Meehan's major worry in this fight. It's a powerful punch to the head and also to the body, and he'll unveil it often tonight.
Meehan has a five inch height advantage and he should use it. Kelly sometimes lowers his hands after he punches. Brewster can counter that, especially with the hook. Knocking out Brewster is very hard as Klitschko found out. So Meehan needs to keep working and win rounds. So Lehman Brewster, a 10 to 1 underdog, going into his fight with Vladimir Klitschko, a 10 to 1 favorite, entering this fight with Kali Meehan. The engaging Kali Meehan, the first Australian based fighter to go for a heavyweight title in 100 years. History aside, Meehan, a former house painter who's not exactly a household name in the United States. Now he got ranked number 15, almost incredulous. A lot of inactivity, low level opposition, and the one time he stepped up, he was obliterated in 32 seconds by Danny Williams. Yes, the same Danny Williams who knocked out Mike Tyson. I guess uh, it's a rhetorical question, but what has he done to earn this opportunity? You know, some might say that he, by being the sparring partner of Lehman Brewster, you can make the case that at least he has familiarity with him. Imagine if he was a 10 to 1 underdog coming in against a fighter he had never been in the ring with. He thinks at least that familiarity gives him some clue as to what he might be able to do in this fight. We'll see. Yeah, he may be known as the best big man down under, but in all honesty, very, very difficult for a lot of folks in boxing to take him seriously on this particular level. You have to question his his resume, but you can't question his heart as a human being. He sat out for about a year in boxing a couple of years ago, and in order to get his family together, he was a garbage man. He worked in night security. He played rugby league football, which is a very, very rough sport. So you can, you know, question why he's here, but you can't question his guts and his heart. And he's a very good athlete. And one of the things that he does, if, if he doesn't get hurt early, Callie Meehan has the chance to set a certain tempo in this fight against a Brewster who told us he might not attack as dramatically as Meehan thinks he's going to. So the hope for Callie Meehan is to get through those early couple of rounds and then set a tempo where it's kind of a, I don't want to say this, but a little more like a sparring session where Brewster isn't attempting to knock his head off with every punch. And that's not out of the question, but certainly the burden of proof is on Callie Meehan to make that happen. Yeah, that's the thing with Brewster. You never know if he's going to go in and try to take a guy's head off or if he's going to, you know, box and jab and move around a lot. He's been very inconsistent. This is now becoming the longest ring walk in the last five years. He is literally shuffling along. Uh, and I guess, you know, it's the old 15 minutes of fame and Kelly Meehan wants to make yeah. it truly. No, maybe 25 in minutes. In this case, maybe an hour. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a fighter walk this slow to a ring. He is certainly taking his time. It looks like uh, a traffic jam on the Long Island Expressway or something. <laughs> Times Square on New Year's Eve. I'm really not sure what the rationale for this is, but... You could make the case, I guess, that he doesn't want to get in that ring, but um, clearly we assume he must, and they're yeah. just absolutely sauntering. And I, actually, sauntering is the wrong phrase because they're not even sauntering, but we see the ring in sight. That's good news for all of us. Shuffling's not even the right phrase. Well, they're here from down under to support Kali Min, and he finally makes it into the ring after one of the longest and slowest ring walks we've ever seen. That was like slow motion. It was the complete antithesis of Corey Spinks' ring walk where he was dancing around. Well, he's finally made it. The question is, will the ring walk be longer than the fight? And has this moment gotten the better of Kali Meehan? We'll see. Where's the mouthpiece? He's been uh, in the United States about five times this third trip to Las Vegas. Some of them on sparring missions and one of his sparring partners you're looking at, Lehman Brewster, returning to the scene of his compelling comeback win over heavily favored Vladimir Klitschko. Many feel tonight represents his reward with the very safe opponent in Min. Therefore, Brewster, as with Spinks earlier, must not only prevail but do it convincingly. 
And in many minds, that means a knockout, a good knockout. Tough to question Brewster's chin or heart, but being a champion in today's weak heavyweight climate does not hurt his cause. Nevertheless, Al, it's got to be an incredible thrill to be walking in for the first time as a heavyweight champion. A lot of emotion, the same place where he won the championship from Vladimir Klitschko, and he's been very philosophical and sentimental leading up to this, talking about not only what he wants to do in boxing, but his former trainer, Bill Slayton, who passed away last year. He says, every time I step in the ring, I'm fighting with his memory in mind. An extremely outgoing, affable guy, very philosophical, spiritual, remains totally inspired by, uh, as Al pointed out, his late trainer and father figure, Bill Slayton. But, it, it, you know, it's got to be a concern as he's being checked out by Jay Nady. When, when you see that he's lost to guys like Charles Schufert and Clifford Etienne, although Brewster attributes those defeats to an injured knee. He hurt his knee in the first round, tore it up against Clifford Etienne. And uh, so he says that's what you got to blame on those losses. And if there's one element missing, it might be that he did not create excitement in this arena when he came in. But of course, he would probably say that's still to come if I can put together one or two performances that inspire the fans. Yeah, uh, the knock on him has been uh, in underachieving uh, through the years. And we'll see if uh, he can knock that away. Let's check the numbers as we go to the tail of the tape. The champion Brewster, three years younger than me, and the 6'5", me and a five-inch height advantage, but just an inch and a half edge in reach. At Thursday's weigh-in, Brewster 227. Some feel he should have come in a little lighter. Me and up nine pounds from his last fight. The rules, no standing eight, no three knockdown. A fighter can't be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth, it's a no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecard. So here at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, we're getting ready for our main event, Lehman Brewster versus Kali Meehan for the WBO Heavyweight Championship. The official introductions, our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time for our featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Don King Productions in association with CM Exchange, the Mandalay Bay and Showtime. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBO, President Francisco Valcarcel Supervisor Stan Gala. Along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the chairman is John Bailey, commissioners Dr. Tony Alamo, Skip Avancino, Joe W. Brown, and Dr. Flip Homansky, with the executive director Mark Ratner. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. James Game, Dr. Al Capanna, and Dr. Jeff Davidson. Timekeepers at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, James Cavan and Mike Lachella. Introducing our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Adelaide Bird. Also from Las Vegas, Dave Moretti. And from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Nelson Vasquez. Our referee in charge of the action, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions. Working in this, his 69th world title bout, Jay Nady. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Heavyweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, it's showtime! Introducing to you first on my left, the challenger. Fighting out of the blue corner, he is wearing dark blue trunks. Fighting out of the central coast, New South Wales in Australia by way of Auckland, New Zealand. He weighed in at 236 pounds. His record stands at 29 wins. Only one defeat with 23 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked number 15 by the WBO. Please welcome the Australian and Pan Pacific.
Pacific Heavyweight Champion, introducing a colleague, Checkmate Median. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring wearing gold trunks with black trim, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, by way of Indianapolis, Indiana. His weight, 227 pounds. His record, 30 wins, two losses, 27. Big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the first defense of his title. Please welcome the WBO heavyweight champion of the world, introducing relentless Lehman. Once again, Jay Nady is our referee in charge. Now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. Fighters come center, please. Fighters come center. Okay. Do we have any questions? We have 12 rounds. Obey my commands. Let's go to work. Touch up. First title defense for Lame and Brewster. First title shot for Tommy Meehan. Two very good friends, but all that goes out the window when they get into the ring. Brewster says everybody, including me, and expects him to storm in, winking bombs, but he said it'll be more of a chess match. Meehan. He said, isn't Vladimir Klitschko, no whom he fought at a brisk pace, knowing his heart and stamina for the record, 13 of Brewster's 27 knockouts in the first round. Bring We're set to fight. go. <laughs> Lehman Brewster in the gold with the black. Kali Mann in the blue with the gold. These first couple of rounds, vital for Kali Mann. Can he establish anything? Can he not get hit with something big, as we've pointed out in his one major moment in boxing against Danny Williams, who's knocked out in 32 seconds of the first round, and so he needs to get through these rounds. That was the second punch of the fight, and then when he got up again, the third punch yeah. of the fight. That two, sent me in down. Two big right hands, and of course, it's the left hook that Nian is concerned about here. He didn't wait a moment when we asked him what concerns you most about Brewster. He said, the left hook. Not much happening, as you can see, on the crowd getting on these two guys. Right now, they're fighting as if they are good friends. Well, Brewster decided, as you pointed out, that he said, I think Kelly Meehan thinks I'm going to rush in and throw that left hook, so I want to surprise him and not do that. Of course, the whole point is, it's possible that while he may know you're going to do it, that may be your best hope for victory, so it might still be the thing to do. Well, Brewster, uh, although you wouldn't know it by uh, this display here, is physically strong. He does have the big left hook, as Al alluded to. Tremendous will and resolve. He can take a punch. Leaky defense can't be outworked, and sometimes questionable judgment. Well, so far, this is the complete opposite of, uh, of Corey Spinks. Yeah, very, very few punches being thrown. Me and throwing the, the right hand. Uh, Brewster doing almost nothing. Lehman Brewster is at best a boxer puncher, not a boxer. And uh, he's staying on the outside where, you know, he has a good jab and it's underused and he hasn't used that punch at all yet. Not exactly sure what he's waiting for. And the crowd pretty much feels the same way. The interesting thing is that while Brewster has done very little offensively, Meehan also has. So he has not taken advantage of this slow start or subdued start, if you will, by Lehman Brewster. There it goes. There's a hook by Brewster. The left hook, and now Brewster goes to work. The chess bats is over, at least for the moment. Nice counter right by me and off the ropes. And there you saw what Brewster's capable of when he puts his punches together. Probably a sigh of relief from Callie Meehan. When that happened in the Williams fight, he was already out. It's true. <laughs> So he's out of the game there anyway. Way beyond 32 seconds. <laughs> and that flurry may have won Bruce to the round. Ah! 
Final seconds of the opening round, a very boring one for the most part, except for one flurry by Lehman Brewster. And the crowd continues to uh, show its disfavor. Finally, a punch offered by Vian at the bell. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, Steve, I'm here with the IBF heavyweight champion of the world, Chris Bird. Chris, you here doing a little scouting tonight on, on Brewster? Uh, no, not really. I've seen Lehman fight a, a lot. You know, as a professional, um, he's a great fighter. You know, the, the win over Klitschko was amazing, and uh, he's here in the heavyweight division. We hear a lot of rumors that there might be some sort of a round robin a tournament. Is there anything that you can add to that? Is that true? Will there be a tournament to unify these belts? Well, I hope so. You know, that's that's the, the goal for me is to uni unification. So um, hopefully, you know, the other champions, we all can get together and fight and see who's the best heavyweight in the world is. Chris, do you think people somewhat duck you because of your style? Yeah, you know, um, they've been ducking me for a long time. A lot of the top heavyweights, but uh, you know, my last two fights were a little controversial. Um, you know, they, they say I'm slipping a little bit, which is good. Hopefully the guys come out and fight me now. Chris, thank you. We appreciate it. We look forward to your next fight. Uh, thank you very much. All right, Steve, back to you. Thanks, Jim. Chris Bird, John Ruiz, Vitali Klitschko, the other heavyweight champions. FYI, Don King promotes all but WBC champ Klitschko, so it could be very tough to get to Vitali to participate. Brewster, by the way, said Klitschko's last opponent, Corey Sanders, looked like Elvis in his last concert, <laughs> alluding uh, to Sanders' weight. I would have to say an appropriate Las Vegas comment since we yes. Have. Well, round two, nothing much happened in round one. A lot of booing by the fans. Brewster said that when they sparred, he was actually stunned by a chopping right hand by Kelly Meehan. Of course, that's with bigger gloves. Uh, so he feels that Meehan does have some power in that right hand. There's a little, little blood from the nose, I think, of, uh, of Lehman Brewster. Did that happen during the ring walk? <laughs> Perhaps in the corner. Well, me and I may have landed a jab somewhere in there. I guess he did somewhere along the, the line of round one. And I there, only threw about one or two punches. And there is a jab from me. And he's targeting that nose. Me and basically relies on brute strength and size. Uh, and as Al uh, said, uh, in sparring, uh, Brewster said he felt me in his right hand from time to time. But not a lot of movement, as you can see. A very rigid, mechanical, European style. Very good target. But so far, a layman Brewster laying back. See Brewster wearing that brace on his left knee. That came from an injury in his fight with Clifford at the end several years ago. Uh, feels it's repaired, but he wears the brace just for comfort. He said, you know, just to give him confidence that when he does something, he's not going to hurt that knee again. It's all precautionary. He does feel 100% healthy, he told us. He said that that was the first time in a fight where his ego got the best of him when he brawled with Etienne. Well, if Lehman Brewster wants to make a statement, this is not the way to do it, at least at this uh, at this point. Unless he's uh, planning something. But I tell you what, he's really bleeding from the nose now. Really. Well, Lehman Brewster is not by trade a uh, fancy boxer. He could be at best, as I said, a boxer puncher. So for him to have this strategy against a big, tall fighter, uh, it's not going to produce an appealing fight and not one in which he'll get much done. He could do this for a while and then go after a knockout, of course, but why not go after it in some fashion, at least early? There's a lot of blood coming from that nose. It's interesting. Whatever did happen created an issue there, that's for sure. And probably one of those jabs by me. I guess this is Kelly Meehan's round, maybe. Another awful round. He's standing on the end. You got to get closer. You know, the boy can't hit you. You can see that. You're boxing beautifully, but you're not doing enough. Don't blow, don't blow. Don't blow. Great three, okay? You got to get these established your jab. He can't touch you, but don't let him get the momentum. So close the gap. Now. Close the gap. Okay. okay. You give him. You let him get a little confident. Okay. Okay. Now we didn't establish that he can't hit you with nothing. Now we got to start letting our hands go. Okay. Let our hands go. You know, when you get close to him you, and you hit him, you start letting your hands go. You hurt him. But if you're not letting him go, he's gonna get, you know, get brave, huh? So let's not let that happen. So start getting, getting your punches. 
Ballen. The words in Brewster's corner, you're not doing enough, the understatement of the year. I'll tell you what, unless things uh, pick up, this is another reason why a guy like Mike Tyson has a shot at the title despite his recent loss. At least he's active and he hits hard. And he puts people in the seats. Well, it's why it makes him an attraction for sure. Whether he'll win the title remains to be seen. But yeah, it's why people are at least interested in him. Well, the blood continues to uh, come out of the nose of Raymond Brewster there. His nose was bloodied early in round two. Brewster, you know, what they told him in, in his corner is accurate in many respects. He slipped a lot of punches by Kelly Meehan, even as he's coming in, so he has certainly shown that. Now it's time to simply open up with punches. And you see he's starting to use the jab. Only a one-inch difference in uh, reach, so despite the height that Kelly Meehan has, it's not that the jab of Booster couldn't get in. And there's the hook that stunned Kelly Meehan, so it's a matter of punching, isn't it? The left hook predominantly being used here in this sequence by Brewster. See, and if you look at what Lehman Brewster just did, those punches were all delivered effectively. They del were delivered in combination. He's a capable fighter. He just needs to do it. He's, he has been a capable fighter since his amateur days when he was a, a, almost an Olympian. But he has moments when he just is an underachiever. And now, uh, we said it earlier to increase his marketability. He's got to come out and be more entertaining. There's just no question about it. And he's got a sitting duck in front of him. There you go. That's what the people want to say, but Mian comes back. Brewster landing those hooks to the body and the head. That left hook is certainly his calling card. That and the jab is best weapons. And Mian surviving that. And then digging shots to the, uh, to the stomach. Big confidence booster in a way for me and to get past what he's gotten past here in round three, despite the fact that he's certainly losing the round. So and now opening up a bit. Me and smothering his own punches though, not giving himself room to punch. He needs a little more leverage. He's a step back. Brewster's punchers have, have more impact, more power. Watch your head. Both men committed to the body, and there's a beautiful right hand by Brewster downstairs. Now Brewster goes upstairs, but some of those punches, most of them blocked. Good exchanges here in round three, so things have certainly changed. And it's become at least a bit more competitive here in the third. The Mian family on hand. Wife Rowena, sons Lewis, Willis, and Isaac. Come a long way to Las Vegas. Hey, we have a, a future fighter in the family. Beautiful work, mate. Beautiful work. You just got to set that right hand up a bit more, okay? Set that right hand up and get a bit more aggro with it. But let him work. He's working hard, okay? Breathing. Raymond Brewster willing to step in and uh, get some work done. Most of it with the uh, with the left hook he throws the right but then comes back immediately with the left hook he's got an excellent left hook and you'll see he'll rip it to the body and the head he gets good leverage especially when he throws it to the body and me and holding on there perhaps stunned momentarily but he's able to get past this and even have a few moments for himself but brewster on the inside working very well those are nice combinations and several of those punches landing brewster uh can be outworked, as we have seen, can be slow and deliberate. And if he is at a slugfest, if this turns into a brawl, he does get hit a lot. He often leads with his chin and can make a target practice for his opponent, but he can absorb a lot of punishment as well. He's really got a big heart. But he's got to press forward and be more consistent here and put a show on for this crowd. You know, Brewster said the Klitschko fight, he knew was a fight of endurance. He knew he was going to get a hit. He also felt confident that Klitschko would fold in four or five rounds. And, of course, that happened. He doesn't think Kelly Meehan will do that. And he said this is a fight more about showing skills. So in some ways, it's almost as if Brewster is pacing himself. Um, and, of course, that can be a problem. Yeah, it's, a, it's a cat, almost a catch-22. 
You can't win over the public by doing that. But it's it may be the smart thing to do. And you know, Bill Slate told him be smart. Good right hand by me and, and a missed left hook by Brewster. And of course, people question Brewster's conditioning from time to time. Um, as you pointed out, some wondering if he's carrying a little too much weight for this fight as he has in recent fights. So we'll get that answer if this fight does in fact head into some of the later rounds. Yeah, he's about the same weight he was uh, for the Vladimir Klitschko fight. You want me and he's almost 10 pounds more than he was for his uh, his last fight. Here's the jab from Brewster. It's a good punch. It is underused by him. Meehan's fighting like he's just happy to be here. Brewster should be fighting like he wants to put this guy away real soon. And Meehan now starting to throw his own left hooks. Now that's a, oh, and there's oh, a knife right hand. That's a dangerous move by Meehan to throw the hook, though, because he can be countered by Brewster's hook. Well, he's having his moments now, Meehan. Yeah, this is the, uh, the best sequence of the fight for Cali Meehan. It was a 10 to 1 underdog. Hands, watch your hands. Don't hold on to it now. The blood seems to be under control from uh, Brewster's nose. That was a little, a little bit, Lehman. Combination to the body by Brewster. He's done uh, pretty good work downstairs the last couple of rounds. Kelly Meehan has some hand speed. He's not without hand speed. And he also he understands how to counter. We've seen that in this round. Well, the best round of the fight for Kelly Meehan. Strong, strong mind, strong mind. This title's yours. This title's yours. You want it? You want it bad, mate. Let's get that title, okay? Be strong. Be tight in close. You're getting a bit sloppy in range, okay? So be tight in range. When you're in range, be nice and tight and nice and sharp, okay? And he's getting sloppy with his punches too, but he's going to have a big hook in there somewhere. So be sharp. Keep that right hand up. And when you let him go, let him, you can start letting him go in twos and threes now, okay? We're in round five. Coming up round five. Let's take his heart out, okay? Use your mental strength, Carly. Think about them hills up on the bloody coast. We're not on the top okay. of the hill, yeah? We're not on the top of the hill. Let's go. <laughs> Shut. Almost in Hollywood strip fashion, Mark <laughs> Jansen in the face of, of Carly B. Speaking of Hollywood, in the corner of Lehman Brewster is his manager, Sam Simon, who just happens to be the creator of The Simpsons. Unbelievable. Round five, scheduled for 12 for the WBO Heavyweight Championship. You know, one of the things Mark Jansen told Kelly Meehan was, was pretty accurate. Brewster was getting a little wider and a little sloppy with some of his punches already in that last round. And it gave Meehan a chance to counter several times. 23 of Meehan's 29 wins by knockout. He's known for power in Australia. Won his first 23 fights before that loss to Danny Williams. Six and oh since the loss with five knockouts. If you wanted to take the cynical view of Lehman Brewster, it would be that he won his title because, as you see the scoring, which, by the way, mirrors my scoring, 38-38, the cynical view would be that he won it because Vladimir Klitschko just got tired, and that's the basic fact. Well, well if that's the case, he could have yeah, some problems. He'll have some problems tonight, then, and that's the cynical view of Brewster, and to some degree, this performance tonight plays into that hand. Holly Mann uh, with more confidence, landing with the jab. Doesn't follow it up, though. One and done. But Brewster just standing there. Mian's having a good fifth round. At least good by the standards they've set here. Stop. 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 Let go. Step back. Step back clean. Now box. Brewster right now not making it happen. He's, he's letting Meehan come to him. 
for Brewster to be really effective in this fight, he, he needs to press on forward because he needs to land hooks to the body and the head. That's his major calling card. It's the punch will work. And you see from that distance, he can't land that looping left hook against a taller fighter. It's just not going to happen. It was just uh, whisked away by the arm of Ben. So the idea is jab your way in, take three steps in, and when you're right in front of him on his chest, that's when you rip those hooks. And that's the blueprint, basically. And it's a blueprint that Brewster told us he really was not going to use, and he hasn't. There's a good body shot, a digging left by Ben. And he, he landed that punch well. Brewster tried to counter him with the hook, but just barely missed. So it's a dangerous move for Meehan, but he was able to get away from, with it. Brewster now looking very lethargic and, and telegraphing his punches and getting hit a lot. And, you know, these are the same punches that Klitschko was landing against uh, Brewster. Of course, he's a more powerful fighter than Meehan and, a, and a, a better combination puncher. Pretty good round for Kali Man, a very concerned uh, Jelana uh, Brewster, the wife of Lehman. They're shutting down. But you're waiting, you're waiting. You're looking for the big shot. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay? Start working. Start working inside. Okay. Start letting your hand. When you slide up, touch him with one. Slide up, touch him with two. Slide up, make him punch, slide over and hit him with something. You, you, hear, you hear what I'm saying? Huh? You got to make him work. He's a basic fighter. One, two. One, two. One, two, three. Hey. Make him work. Okay? Make him work, and, the, and this fight is turn around. And you'll we'll go home early. Okay? Okay? Work. Let your hands go, T. Again, uh, Shadid Saluki uh, with the right words, but can Lehman Brewster do it? You know, when Brewster sparred with, uh, or when uh, Brewster, yeah, sparred with Kelly Meehan, Meehan, of course, was emulating Vladimir Klitschko. Well, Meehan saw Klitschko basically win virtually every round against Brewster by doing this, throwing jabs at straight right hands, and now he is getting after Brewster. Meehan's got Brewster in a little trouble here against the right. Man is smothering his punches. He needs to give himself punching room. Brewster down only one time in his career against Vladimir Klitschko when he was caught on the temple and not really hurt. But Man is taking it to Brewster here in round six. You're holding, you can't hit. But you're right, Al, if he just takes a step back and fires, he might have better success, just like right there. He is using the Klitschko blueprint, stay back with jabs and straight right hands. That's what got Brewster over here in trouble. Unheralded Kali Mayan coming into Las Vegas here and looking to take a share of the heavyweight Don't title. Don't hold. <laughs> Unbelievable. Would it be a second straight 10 to 1 underdog to win yeah. this WBO Watch title? That hand. would be Watch fairly extraordinary. From the category, here we go again. Well, how long has Lehman Brewster been up against the ropes there? It's been over a minute. That is not where you want to be. He did get an uppercut in, but back comes Ben. But again, not enough leverage. You know, even though he has smothered his own punches, Meehan is leaning on Brewster, and he's, and he's a bigger man making him tired. So while he didn't land a lot of big punches, he also prevented no, Brewster it. from landing over there. Yeah, he's 6'5", 236, so that has to wear on you. Here's another left hand, partially blocked, but it sent Brewster back to the ropes again. If Lehman Brewster is right in his assessment of Meehan, and he won't tire out, Lehman Brewster better get working. Because Brewster is looking a little tired right now. Man, it's got to be wearing Brewster out with those body shots. You know the old adage, take the body, then the head. He's got to be taking Brewster's legs out with, with this stuff. And they have got to be upset in the Brewster corner. Now here's a moment for Brewster. He's got knee in against ropes. He should be ripping left hooks to the body and the head. And he's not. 
Steady's very lethargic there. There's a left hook and a right combinations unanswered by Meehan. Meehan breathing heavily now and going back and Booster going to work. Callie Meehan got a lot done against Lehman Brewster. Sending him against the ropes, hurting him with some good shots, and then keeping him pinned against the ropes, it seems forever. Some of these missing, but obviously some body punches landing, and he leaned on Brewster, landed a lot of good punches. But Meehan may have punched himself out, and Lehman Brewster got busy in the last 45 seconds and hurt Callie Meehan. Lehman Brewster has not been past the sixth round in four years. As Kali Mann looks to become the first Australian-based boxer to win a heavyweight title. <laughs> he is from New Zealand originally, but lives in Australia. And how much did that last 30 seconds of the round turn this fight around? It won't if Lehman Brewster is passive as he has been for so much of this fight. Round seven scheduled for 12 for the WBO heavyweight crown. Man missing with the big right. And the last time Meehan was past, eight, uh, past this distance was in December of 2001. There's the press row scoring. It's still tight. One has it even. That's Graham Houston from Boxing Monthly. I have Meehan ahead by two points in this fight. Stop. 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 Step back. No punching. Now we box. Maybe it's time for Brewster to start doing what Meehan expects. And that's just to go in there and start winging bombs. And interestingly, when Brewster has done that, he has stunned Kelly Meehan exactly. on a couple of different occasions. He had him holding on. Doesn't seem like he has much to lose. And is it a stamina issue for Brewster? And Meehan continues to breathe real heavy. He looks like he might be having a bit of a breathing problem. But, but Brewster not taking advantage. Instead, it's Meehan who lands the jab. When Meehan throws the jab in the straight right hand, and Klitschko showed it, you can hit Lehman Brewster with that combination if you're a big, tall fighter. There's no mistake about it. Six foot five. Brewster continues to be out, out work. He's handing this round to Kelly Meehan. I mean, he really is. And look, he has Meehan in a position where he could attack him against the ropes, and Brewster just lethargic and not doing it. Meehan did uh, tell us in the media yesterday his jab is his best weapon, although Brewster thought it was his right, and the jab is getting in now. And the blood, uh, once again, coming out of the nose of Brewster. Meehan, look how low his hands are, but he's scoring with the left. Look how low his left hand is, and Brewster cannot take him in. All you need is an overhand right. That's the way there's that cold water. And the bucket and the sponge too, Carly. Ted, beautiful work, mate, boxing from the outside like that. You can steal every single round for the rest of the fight like that, OK? Yep. And then have a... Have a bit of a flurry every now and again, that's it. You don't have to flurry all the time. You don't have to stay in there. You only tire yourself, okay? So just box him nice and sharp while they open their eyes up. Let's be the champion. Let's be sharp, okay? Let's be sharp, Kelly. You're winning it, mate. You're on top. You win every round from now on. You can win every round. It's round eight coming up, all right? Round eight. How easy is that? Championship of the world, mate. 
start letting our hands go, man. This this boy's no class. Okay. Not even in our, in our same class. You know, you're making the moves, but you're not letting your hands go. You're not letting your hands go. You got to let your hands go, okay? You let them go. A sense of urgency in the Brewster corner and over in the Mead corner. Boy, it really sounds like they're starting to believe. You know, Lehman Brewster is as, about as engaging and interesting a young man as you will ever meet. And he talks about the passion he has for the sport of boxing, but sometimes it doesn't show up in the ring, and it hasn't tonight. But Mark Jansen over in the corner of Meehan, he's got some passion, doesn't he? And he wants to make his fighter believe and understand that what he's doing is per perfect, doesn't need to change technically, just keep doing it. And he's got to convince him that he can win this title if he keeps doing it. Pally Mann continues to box from the outside and continues to score like that. Two, three in a row, unanswered punches. There's the jab that gets through the gloves. The interesting thing is, and it's really spooky, he looks like how he must have looked impersonating Vladimir Klitschko when he sparred, except he's doing it more aggressively with smaller gloves and with conviction because he's not a sparring partner. See the record past seven and it favors me in right now. Oh man, Brewster's hurt. Yeah, he's got him temporarily stunned. And in a terrible place, Lehman Brewster. A whacking right, doubling up, tripling up on the rights. Brewster trying to uh, counter with the left hook. Will Nian punch himself out as he did a little bit in one of those earlier rounds? My, what about the Brewster's exhausted right now. Rubbery legs. This is Mian's time. A right uppercut to the jaw. Brewster's ready to go. He's being held up by the ropes. He's being held up by the ropes, but no knockdown. Heavy right hands by Polly Mian, looking for the upset and the title. 48 seconds for Brewster to score. He didn't totally smother his punches. He, he stayed back far enough and even mixed in the uppercut. Now, he held and he hit on that and didn't get a warning from Jay Nady, but it was very effective. Shades of Lennox Lewis. And he kept whacking him with right hands. It was astonishing how many right hands Lehman Brewster took while he was flush against those ropes. The left side of Brewster's head is really swollen. Dr. Margaret Goodman was in there to, to see if Brewster was able to continue. They said he's all right. They know his history. They know what happened in the Klitschko fight. Now, here's Brewster looking to turn it on in round nine after taking a whooping, a beating in round eight. Really, how did Lehman Brewster stand up? I mean, that was yeah. staggering. He got hit with about... 12 flush right hand. There was cause. You could have called a knockdown. That's right. You're absolutely correct because the ropes were keeping him up. But Jay Nady let it go. 
Yeah, and I scored that a two-point round for Kelly Meehan. I don't know how you couldn't. I agree. Even without a knockdown, Meehan steps back, takes a huge breath. And now let's talk about scoring. We're in round eight here. Kelly Meehan could be far enough, or in round nine, excuse me, we're, he's far enough ahead that he might be able to win this fight yeah. just by hanging in there. Brewster is hoping, like in the Klitschko, Vladimir Klitschko fight, perhaps Meehan punched yeah. himself out, Al. But not there. There was another banging right hand on the ear. Jab, straight right hand. It's what you need to do to beat Lehman Brewster, and that is what Kelly Meehan's doing. How many times can you go to that strategy, though? And how many times can you go to the proverbial well? Now he's against the ropes, Kelly Meehan. That's not where he wants to be. And a moment ago, Meehan threw a, a, a uppercut from far back and almost got countered. If I'm Mark Jansen, I'm telling my guy throw nothing but jabs and straight right hands. The press row guys have Meehan ahead. There's another right hand. Now, Meehan's smart. He steps back. He should stay on the outside. Box. Use the jab. And periodically throw that right. Just like his corner wanted. Approaching the final minute of the night. Scheduled for 12 for the WBO heavyweight title. Well, I've got Meehan ahead 78-73. So I have a little bigger margin. Wow. There's a right hand up top. Boy, you got to climb high to get the towering man. That one landed. Let's see if it starts a barrage by Brewster. And Meehan's holding on. Yeah, he got hurt from that one. He felt the sting. There's still some drama in this fight. The last three rounds are going to, last two and a half rounds are going to be interesting. Less than 30 seconds in round nine. Brewster somehow surviving that Meehan barrage in round eight. A series of right hands. Then again, his hands down really low, particularly that right. Now the left really down low as well, but Brewster couldn't capitalize. Control your breathing, control your breathing. Now you've got to sit, you've got to sit, and you've got to stay sharp, okay? You've got to stay sharp. Noodle corner. Pardon? Noodle corner. What's that, sorry? <laughs> it's round 10 coming Noodle. up. Well, counter. Counter, counter him all night long. You're ahead, mate. You're ahead, you're winning this fight. Okay. Counter him, counter him, counter him. But be strong and be composed. Don't look tired and don't, don't let your tiredness show, okay? He's okay. twice as tired as you are, mate. <laughs> okay? Sharp jab, sharp jab. Jab, jab, simple stuff. Jab, one, two. Box him from the outside. Jab, jab, right hand. He's a little dizzier. He's tired. Right, Don't let him rest. Yeah, Take the one. Huh? Okay. Let's go, guys. Okay. You got me? No more jab. Single jab. Meehan was asking his trainer, Mark Jansen, lead or counter. He was asking him a question. And Jansen was replying, counter, counter. It was yeah. interesting. You know, this, this fight is what the heavyweight division is all about right now because it is two fighters who are not fighting a perfect technical or artistic fight, but who are creating a, an equal fight and one with its share of excitement. And whether it's all the Klitschko's battling back and forth with people or Bird and Galata, you named the fight in the last a year and a half. What we have are a bunch of equal heavyweights who are, none of them are fighting great, but they are just equal enough to create some exciting matches. And now that's exactly what's happened here. Well, to, to sum it up, not the uh, the greatest talent in the world on display here, but it's been entertaining. It has been. After the, a very slow start, we have, it has been wildly entertaining. Round 10 scheduled for 12. And not for a moment suggesting that these men are putting on a dazzling technical display, but at moments, they do. Meehan uh, staying on the outside, uh, as his trainer suggested, electing to counter, but continues to use that jab, work the jab. You know, I, it's hard to imagine Lehman Brewster not, you know, he may, the scoring of the officials may be different. It might be a very, very close fight. I think Meehan's ahead in this fight 
it's interesting, Brewster is still not showing the urgency of getting in there and trying to make something happen. Yeah, the story uh, here, overriding story, is Brewster, who upset uh, Vladimir Klitschko uh, to capture the title, is just not getting the job done. This is not the way to market yourself. And for Kelly Meehan, what he's showing us tonight is if he can be in a fight where he isn't hurt, where he isn't overpowered by someone, he can get some things done. This is not to say that Booster may not uh, pull this out somehow in dramatic fashion, but right now, I have to just question. Uh, there's a big left hand and her, on the drop. That stunned me. Stop! I mean, you got to go back to what we were talking about earlier. Holly man, he's a guy who was just destroyed by Danny Williams in 32 seconds, and now he may take the WBO title away from Lehman Bruce. Let me, it's, it speaks to Danny Williams as an underachieving heavyweight. The, it, the English people called him their Buster Douglas. He showed us against Tyson. He's just that. Brewster. Brewster's having a better round here. Big end for Brewster. You see how you put them together with that fast, the fast combinations and the threes? That's what we got to do. Let me get we got to put them together. We got to, hey, we got to put them together in threes. We got to put them together in threes, baby. We got to put them together in threes and fours. You can't do them one. The jab, get there. Keep getting hands up high because he's throwing a nuclear shot. You got to bring, keep your hands up high, but as soon as you get there, bang, 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 go. Okay. Don't wait on it. Now, we need these rounds, but we need to be busy. Huh? Busy, busy. Not one. In Lehman Brewster's corner, they want this kind of action when he gets in there. They want him to put his punches together. And there's a three-punch combination that is superb. And the last left hook sent Callie Mean back. Now, here's the difference. That's exactly like the combination he landed in the to knock out Vladimir Klitschko. Mean didn't go down. That's precisely the combination he landed. Brewster predicted that. Yeah, he did indeed. Time is running out on the champion, Lehman Brewster, in the gold black. Neither fighter have been, has been uh, into the championship rounds. This is round 11. Meehan has never been past eight, we remind you. And that's another reason why Mark Jansen continuing to plead with his fighter and let him know you can do this because it's uncharted territory for him and in a championship fight, no less, on the biggest stage he's ever fought on. Give Kelly Meehan this credit. He's kept his poise throughout this fight in a great way. Now, not, he hasn't always been tested by Brewster, but he has on occasion. A year and a half ago, Kelly Meehan was working as a garbage man and as a security guard. Yeah. And here he is in Mandalay Bay on national television fighting for the World Championship and maybe becoming the first Australian to win any version of it. A former uh, house painter. A lot of jobs. He was going to go uh, on a boat to become a fisherman when he was called back at the last minute to take a big fight. And it, it got him back on track uh, as far as his career was concerned. And here he is, moments away from a possible dream. He's leading in the press row scoring, though. It, it would be a majority win at that point for him. I have him four points ahead, but of course it could be closer than that. Raymond Brewster just being bodily pushed back into his own turnbuckle. And the crowd sensing something here from Mann. Once again, Brewster against the ropes. Both men are tired. I mean, yeah. Steve, they are oh, both fatigued. And that's a big factor now. If somebody can land something big, maybe someone will go down. But it's Mann, the aggressor. It's an instant replay of a few rounds ago, only on the other ropes. Come on, guys. But both guys uh, seemingly have run out of gas. Raymond Brewster, who left Indianapolis at the age of 18 with but a satchel and a pair of boxing gloves and a Bible in the satchel, pursuing his dream, going to Los Angeles. He got his dream when he beat Vladimir Klitschko, but if he doesn't hurry up and do more of this, that dream's going to end. 
And every time he does, he's effective. Was that enough for him to steal this round? It might have been. They remember the last part of rounds, D judges. Final seconds of the 11th. Boy, Brewster clipped on the top of the head with a right hand by Mann. Did Brewster steal that round? Championship of the world. Three minutes now. You know what? This is going to be the best three minutes of your life, Carly. This is counting on everything. Fiji, New Zealand, Australia, Wyoming, Maryborough. Everything counts on this, Carly. And you can do it standing on your head. Where's the drink? You can do it standing on your head, okay? You got to go get him. You got to go get him. You can't put it in the judge's hands. All right. Don't reach. Okay. You just stay low. If there's the 12th and last round coming. Stay right up his body, okay? Because he's, he's hurt. And just come up, okay? okay. And use the, hey. use the rope to your advantage. But you got to use your jab. You're sliding up, but you're not. You're waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, we're approaching the 12th and final round of this challenge. Mr. Mahal, the end of I'll give Mark Jansen the Nuke Rockney Award on that one. <laughs> That was as good a speech right, as you'll find, and they hug. They don't touch gloves. They embrace to begin the 12th and final. You can say what you want, but these two guys showing great sportsmanship as well. And Brewster coming out to do what they told him to. They said, your championship's on the line. You better land some punches, and you better try and knock him out. It would seem that Landon Brewster needs something very dramatic. A knockout here to pull out this way, but you just never know. When you're the champion, when you're the challenger like Kali Min, you really have to win convincingly on points. Sometimes it's just so tough to take the title away from the champion. Stop, stop, well, stop. if this goes 12 rounds like and you can't do that. the decision is controversial in some fashion, which I suspect it could be either way, can you say the word rematch? Oh, yeah. Well. We've had a lot of controversial decisions here in, in Las Vegas, so we'll eagerly await this outcome if it goes the distance. I have me in ahead by three points now, but you can make a case that it's a lot closer than that. Kevin, Kevin Ioli from the Las Vegas Review Journal has it even. Graham Houston, one yeah, up for there Brewster. You there you are. So there's a draw right there. And of course, if the official judges see it a draw, Brewster hangs on to his. His belt. Brewster got stunned there, but yep. Ian doesn't have enough to go after him. He just pushes him away. Well, there's there's no sense of urgency whatsoever, no sense of desperation, no sense of outrage at all by Lehman Brewster. And Al, not only here when he means it most in the last round, but not since the first round. Well, he's done it only in spots, and now he's hurt again by a yeah. right hand by Mia. In, in spots, Lehman Brewster has been aggressive okay. and effective, but not enough. Not enough. At least not in our view. And Mian goes back to work. Mian could be less than a minute away from a heavyweight championship, believe it or not. Who would have thought? It is possible. And he continues to score. Mian looks like he's ready to collapse, but hangs in there. Well, so far, round 12 appears to be Mian's round. There's no, I don't think there's much doubt about that. He has landed the harder punches and more of them. That, I think, is pretty much not in dispute, unless Brewster comes back big, and there he starts to. Are there 20 seconds left in Brewster's championship reign? It is possible. Brewster trying to box. He is so awkward. That is, he can't even begin to try and use lateral movement, yet he wants to. 10 seconds. Brewster now finally shows some desperation. That's it. That is it. Great fight, oh, great fight. Brother. Kali Mian's family standing by for the decision. Are there some moment, some nervous people watching in Australia right now where oh, yeah. Ted Allen told us there has been tremendous support to listen. The manager, Ted Allen, of Polly Man. Thank you, Mr. Frighten me, man.
very anxious moments for her. That's Sam Simon. What happened if I do? John Kerry in the hurry, baby. That's what I'm voting for. John Kerry in the hurry. Name of Booster. Hayway Tampa, another world. Dr. Perry, bring up. Thanks for all your help. Yes, sir. What will cardio care? Do you think you did enough to win the yeah. fight? Tell, tell That's not my job. That's the judge's job. We've done it's enough. The, we it, it's it. the judge's job. Tough. Brewster came in here. He not only had to win, he had to win convincingly. We're not even sure he won. Yeah. I had to switch my scout up from here. Set for the decision. Let's go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Adelaide Bird scores them at 114 to 113 in favor of Kali Meehan. Judge at ringside, Dave Moretti scores them out 114 to 113 in favor of Lehman Brewster. <laughs> Judge at ringside, Nelson Vasquez scores them out 115 to 113 in favor of the winner and, and still. still champion, relentless, Lehman Brewster. Suspected uh, a controversial decision. You see the relief on the face of Brewster's wife. According to the official scorecards, Alvin needed to win that final round to win the fight. He did not do it. How, how do you figure? How do you figure? <laughs> how, how do you figure you didn't win that last round? I, you can make a case it's a very close fight, but intriguing that he didn't win that last round. But uh, no, it's interesting. So, a very uh, controversial decision. Who thought it would even come to this? Most people thought that Brewster would uh, would manhandle Kali Meehan despite the size difference. Very close fight. Um, I thought Meehan did more, enough to win the fight, but clearly some of those rounds very, very close, and apparently most of the close rounds ended up going to Lehman Brewster because of those flurries that he came, uh, that he got going at portions of the round. You heard the reaction from the... Uh, very spirited uh, crowd here at the Mandalay Bay. A lot of them are disagreeing with the final results. Let's go up to Jim Gray in the ring. Jim. All right, Steve. They're having a conversation. Let's listen in here a second. That's what gentlemen do, man. That's a gentleman of the sport. I'm a gentleman of the sport. Had Kalia gotten a decision, thank God he didn't. I would have been shaking his hand and still been right here to support him because he fought hard. As I told you, all Australians, I've never fought one. That, I never even seen one that didn't fight hard. So, hey, man, I'm going to go heal after this. You just said, thank God, he didn't get the decision. Do you yeah. feel that he, you deserve the decision? Yeah, I feel I deserve the decision because I pressed the issue um, after after a couple of rounds. I, you know, I was, I was boxing him, I was slipping, and a couple of shots was missing. But I started uh, seeing that in order for me to be effective, because he was getting his confidence, I had to start putting pressure on him and making him aware of my power. Callie? Yeah. Your reaction to this decision, did you feel as though you won the fight? First of all, man, I just want to thank God for giving me an opportunity to fight for heavyweight That's title. Right, and um, this man here, Mark Jansen, my trainer, if it wasn't for him, none of this would have happened. He put our team together a year ago, 
did you think you won the fight? Well, it's not my job to judge a fight. It's my job to do my best. And he who's done his best has done enough. You know, if the, if the fight went to me, I wouldn't think I lost it. If the fight went to Lehman, I can't say I think he lost well, it. In your head, going into the final round, did you feel as though you were ahead in the, going into the final round? And did you feel you won the final round? Um, yeah, in, in my corner and on the 11th round, we, we felt that um, I was ahead slightly on points. But uh, maybe someone wants a rematch, I don't know, because it's such a good fight, I think. Well, I, hope, I hope that the boxing um, public in America can look at me and say I'm worthy enough to be here because it means a lot to me to perform well in the home of boxing in the world, which is America. Kelly, let me ask you, you were a sparring partner for, uh, before he fought against uh, Klitschko. Before he fought against Klitschko. Did you take Klitschko's package and, and basically get that down and still have the confidence to have the endurance unlike Klitschko did? Well, one thing I, I learned about Klitschko is he was a hit on, on, on the fight. He hurt Lehman and it looked to me, I mean, it's up to himself what he says, but it looked to me like Klitschko um, gave up path. once he was tired. I mean, I wasn't going to give up. I wasn't going to give up. He hurt me and I think the first round, second round, I wasn't going to give up. Did you think you had him out in the eighth round and were you looking for, for Jay Nady, the referee, to step in and stop it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, man, I had you then. Hey. I had you, man. I had him there and I, I don't know what I did. I, I was thinking three things at once to do, either left, right, left, right, and go for the body or trying to pull his hand down. I was thinking too many things at once and um, the bell went and he, he got away with it. But he's a great fighter. He's got a big heart. A lot, a lot of fighters would have gave up there. Terrific fight. And, you know, Don King put on a good fight. We told everyone. Everyone said, oh, not everyone said, but I got the impression that people said we talk so friendly to each other. It will be a slow, sloppy, best friend fight. But now, nah, you know, this is our sport. This is our game. And here's a throwback from the old fighters. And so am I in the sense that they always spoke well against each other and they proved it in the ring. And that's what I try to do here tonight instead of Lamb. You're going to give him a rematch? Uh, we're going to talk to Don and see what Don wants to do, man. You know, I can't. You're going to give him a rematch? I'll, I'll give him a rematch if that's what the people want and if that's what, first and foremost, my promoter, the greatest promoter of all time. Get to Don in just a moment. In the eighth round, this man had you out on your feet. Uh, countless punches to, to the to your left side of his head, his right punch. Uh, what is your response? How did you survive that? Well, man, it's all about heart and determination. As I, as I try to tell people, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Um, as I try to tell people, right here. as I try to tell people, you know, it's it's not about it's not about fighting from the pocket. I fight from my heart. That's why I wouldn't go down because I'm in it to win it, man. I'm not in it just for the money, man. I'm in it to show that boxing is a, is a gentleman's sport. I'm here to show that people fight from heart and give great exciting fights like we did tonight. And you know, you get hit, you got that never die, never quit attitude, man. And you Lamont, know what I'm with all due respect, Layman, Layman. Layman, <laughs> with all due respect to your opponent, this man wasn't ranked in the top 40 right. by any other organization right. except for the one that sanctioned this right. fight tonight. That's what why. does that say about where you stand as a heavyweight champion? That doesn't say anything. All that says is that you, exactly. you can't judge a man by his ranking. Look at Corey Sanders when he fought Klitschko. What do they say about Corey? Corey Sanders, man, they didn't give him a chance. He beat Klitschko. Hey, man, this guy came in here trying to support his family, like Lehman Bruce tried to support his family. God protected us both that we both gonna walk out of this ring tonight with our marbles. And that's what all the people want to see, two people who are gonna give their best, win, lose, or draw. That's what the people really want, man. They don't care about who gonna get in here, hit a guy with one shot, and the other guy lay down, get his check, and go home. They wanna see people who are gonna fight toe to toe if that's what it comes to, and bring back this sport, man. And then be able to speak like gentlemen, like me and Kali, after the fight is over, and give Don King the praise, the greatest promoter of all time. Let's look at the end of the fight right here. What's going through your mind here in this final round? What's going through my mind is please fall down, please get tired, please let's get this fight over with. No, seriously, shake, the thing of it was is I said, hey man, you know, I'm hitting this guy with some shots, but he's still there, he gave him the fight. I just kept telling myself, be patient, be patient, because you know, man, you don't want to go out there and shoot your wide on a guy. I did that, I lost the fight as a result of it, so it's just about being smart. It's not all, all the time about giving the audience what they want, because man, if you shoot your wide and get knocked out, well then, the audience ain't going to care nothing about you no way. Congratulations to you. <laughs> All right, thank you. I just want it's to a terrific God. fight, Callie. Let's yeah, bring in Don know. King because, yes, Don, you basically control this division. What will happen next now? Well, uh, Lehman is going to give Holyfield a chance. And give him Holyfield? Another, yes, give Holyfield a chance. Give him another chance to see what he can do. Doesn't this you know man mean? deserve another chance before oh, he Holyfield? Gonna, he definitely going get, to uh, get a chance, you know what I mean? But, you know, we're going to see how it goes. Right now, look like it's Holyfield in the in in the, in the making. And what yeah. happens with your other champions, John Ruiz? And so John forth. Ruiz is fighting uh, Galata. John Ruiz is fighting uh, uh, Galata. 
another white kid that wanted to change. And we, in America, that's what America is all about. Black and white and light working together works. And so you will see Andrew Galata by uh, John Reese uh, for the WBE. And you're going to bring uh, in Chris America. Bird and make this a round robin? Chris Beard will be, he will be fighting right now, Jamil McCline, so, but they all will fight each other. But one thing I can say, I'm very proud of Callie Meehan, and like he said, the people of America and the rest of the world have to respect him because he came in within a half breath of being the heavyweight champion of the world tonight. And it's just the thing here that we, we love you here, man. And I want to say this, I want to give our prayers to those who are down in the great state of Florida. Uh, suffering from the Hurricane Francis, as in my home state now, and I'm working there with them, and I know this storm is really bad, so I'm praying that no one gets hurt and that this storm will pass on by for them. I also want to give out my prayers and for uh, Germany for the tragedy, the terrorist tragedy that they had over there. That was in, Russia. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, in Russia. I'm sorry, excuse me. Thank me. That's why we work so well together. <laughs> in Balsami, Russia, you know what I mean? With uh, Vladimir Putin and all. And thank God we got a man like George Walker Bush in the White House that would stop these terrorists from coming into our country. So, you know, four more years for George Walker Bush. All right, Don, and uh, I'm sure that there is somebody out there who would have the same to say about Mr. Kerry, but we're not getting into a political well, speech here tonight. But I'm just He's our tough, president. The other thing, man's running. Let's George go back Walker to Steve Albert. Mr. That's all I'm saying about the terror. All right, not Jim. Uh, thanks the very much. Um, we'll take a look at the uh, scores as Lehman Brewster escapes with a victory here tonight. There are the official judges' scorecards. You see that Adelaide Bird had me in the head by one point. Dave Moretti had Brewster ahead by one point, and then Nelson Vasquez had Brewster up by two. Interesting. Uh, Interesting thing is uh, it was 104 104 on two judges scorecards going into the last round then 105 104 for Brewster on another card after 11 and uh, Kali Meehan indeed have to uh, had to come through with that last round but he could not there are the judges scorecards they uh, vote split decision and let's take a look at the press row scoring right now David Avila had me in ahead by two Graham Houston had it all even and Kevin Ioli had me in ahead by one, 114 to 113. So they had me in winning the fight by majority decision. So a wild night here in Las Vegas as um, Kali Me. A lot of people thought that Kali Meehan pulled this one out here tonight, but the uh, the judges went the other way. Well, I thought he won the fight. Uh, there were two key points I think that we need to note. Number one in that eighth round when he had uh, Lehman Brewster in all kinds of trouble, and he, Meehan said it well. A fighter with less courage and less grit would have given up or gone down at that point. That's number one. But number two, and this is an important distinction here, the last round was, in fact, the deciding round on all the judges' scorecards. In other words, had Meehan won that last round, he would have won the fight. And I guess that's where I have some issues. I don't see how he didn't win the yeah. last round, honestly. It did seem like he won. I mean, I thought he won the last round. Yeah. I thought he won at least two thirds of that round. That even had Brewster in some trouble. Um, so it sets up what to me would be an intriguing fight between these two. But obviously, we've been told that's not to be the case. Well, uh, and I'm a little disheartened to hear uh, that uh, you know Evander Holyfield, great champion in yep. his in his prime, of course. But uh, a lot of people, uh, including myself, think that uh, he should uh, he should retire, particularly after the uh, the James Tony fight. Will we see uh, Holyfield and uh, Lehman Brewster? That remains to be seen. According to Don King, uh, it's in in the works. Final point on Corey Spinks' performance tonight? Yeah, Corey Spinks did what he needed, exactly what he needed to do, even though he's against a 33-year-old uh, former champion in the lighter weight division. He looked very, very impressive, set down on his punches more, uh, and I thought Corey Spinks gave exactly the performance he needed to show that he's the man in the welterweight division. All right, to Al, as we wind things down from Las Vegas, let's take a final look at Tonight's results in the co-feature. Corey Spinks was successful indeed, defending his welterweight championship and beating former world champion Miguel Angel Gonzalez. And in the main event, which you just saw, in controversial fashion, Lehman Brewster retained his WBO heavyweight crown against unheralded Kali Meehan of New Zealand and Australia. Very uh, disputed decision indeed. A lot of folks thought that Meehan pulled it out. Before we say goodnight, let's give you another reminder of what's on the boxing horizon here on Showtime. Showbox, the new generation returns Thursday, December, September 16th at 11 p.m. as Rico Suave Hoy battles former world champ Montel Ice Griffin in a 12-round light heavyweight bout. And then Saturday, October 2nd at 9 p.m., Showtime Championship Boxing presents an action-packed triple header as former champ Vladimir Klitschko meets NABF champ Devaral Touch of Sleep Williamson in a 10-round heavyweight contest. Also that night, the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship as 
Verno Phillips defends his title against Kasim the Dream Uma. And opening the card undefeated, Jeff Left Hook Lacey goes for his first title against number one Sid Vanderpool with the vacant IBF super middleweight belt at stake. That'll do it for the Mandalay Bay as we close out another edition of America's Fight Night, the first Saturday of every month. For Al Bernstein, Jim Gray, and our entire crew, Steve Albert saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada.